to destroy the works of the evil one and the kingdom of darkness with light and to rescue men from the law of sin this is the gospel of christ to proclaim good news unto the poor the gospel of christ spreading the soul-saving message of jesus and now ben bailey this is the gospel of christ children obey your parents in the lord for this is right Ephesians chapter 6, verse number 1. We welcome you today to our study of godly homes in an ungodly world. Today we're thinking about the role and responsibility of children in the godly home and what an important role they do play as long as they're as well as their parents and so today we're thinking about that subject and we're so glad that you joined us for our study of the word of god we hope you'll have your bible handy with you that you'll locate it if you don't have it take a minute to find your bible and uh, have it as we're going to use it in our study of the word of god today on this subject as always, today's lessons are being brought to you by Christians, members of the Lord's Church and individual congregations. Uh, the Lord's Church in your area, in your town, would love for you to stop by and visit them, uh, whether it be on Sunday or Wednesday for their Bible study or worship. You'll find a friendly environment. You'd be welcomed at any assembly. We want to encourage you to stop by and visit with them at their services. If you'd like to study the Bible, and they'd be people who'd love to sit down and discuss the Word of God with you in a friendly and loving way. And friend, we want to encourage you here. At the Gospel of Christ Evangelistic Work, we want to help you with your study of the Word of God as well. Won't you check out our website, thegospelofchrist.com? From our website, you can find a wide variety of good Bible study materials. If you'd like to have this DVD or CD, this eight lesson series on godly homes in an ungodly world, we'll make that available to you free of charge in multiple avenues. For example, you can download that from our website. Just go to our website, thegospelofchrist.com, go to our media request form and you can select a digital download and you can receive that or if you'd like to have it on DVD or CD, we'll mail that to you free of charge as well. And so we want to encourage you to utilize the good Bible study material, material we've got from our website. Also, in our fast-paced world today where so many people are going so fast these days, check out our smartphone app for Android and for the iPhone as well from the respective Play Stores. That's a great way to study the Word of God on the go. Again, we're glad that you've joined us as we're going to think today about such a pivotal lesson for the home. What's the responsibility and what's the role of children in the home? I want us to begin by thinking about some statements from the wise proverb writer about children in the home. Here's some of those. If you got your Bible, I'd like for you to turn to Proverbs chapter 27, and let's think about some of the encouragements we initially find to children in the Bible. Proverbs chapter 27. I want you to look with me in verse number 11 at these words to children. The Bible says, My son, be wise, and make my heart glad that I may answer him. Who reproaches me? And so from the outset, children are encouraged to make wise decisions, to make their parents proud of them, and to be able to answer in such a way that they don't bring reproach on the family. And so our decision making, the things we get involved in, that reflects on the family, and we want to be a good example. Turn to Proverbs chapter 20. And notice this powerful statement about a child. This is such a big one. Proverbs 20, verse number 11. Even a child is known by his deeds, whether what he, is, what he does is pure and right. You know, we often say you can know them by their fruit. Well, that's kind of the idea here. A child, even though he's a young person, you can know that person by his actions. If he does what's good and right and pure, that reflects well on him and his family. If he's doing evil and ungodliness, that reflects poorly on him and his family. Proverbs chapter 10, verse 1. 
makes this statement about children. A wise son makes a glad father, but a foolish son is the grief of his mother. How many parents have been grieved by the decisions their children made even though they tried to help them do the right thing? We need to think about the impact of what we do on others as well. Proverbs 17 verse 25, a foolish son is grief to his father and bitterness to him who bore her. And so we reflect, our life reflects on the family and our life reflects on God even as children. Here's one of the most powerful statements from the wise Solomon about children. Notice these words with me in Ecclesiastes chapter 12 verse number 1. The writer says in Ecclesiastes 12, 1, Remember now your Creator in the days of your youth, before the difficult days come and the years draw nigh when you say, I have no pleasure in them. Now's the time when you're a young person, you've got good health usually, you've got film, you've got vigor, you've got a lot of stamina and endurance, you've got your whole life ahead of you. What do you need to be thinking about then? Solomon said, remember now your Creator in the days of your youth. Young people, be thinking about what can I do for God as a young person? What can I do to help in the home and the family? What will make our family a better family as a youth? And here are some things we want to encourage. What do children need to do in the home? What's their, what is the child's role and responsibility in the home? Let's open our Bible to Ephesians 6, and I want you to see two responsibilities children are given by God in Ephesians chapter 6. Look in Ephesians 6. We're going to look together in verses 1 through 3. What is the role and responsibility of children? The Bible says, Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise, that it may be well with you, and that you may live long on the earth. Two things children are responsible for in the home. Children, obey your parents in the Lord. Now, there is a caveat there, and we understand that. We're to obey our parents in the Lord. And the phrase, in the Lord, means as long as what they're doing is in keeping with the will of God. If your parents tell you to get involved in something sinful or immoral or ungodly, you're to obey God rather than man, Acts 5.29. But as your parents are teaching you and instructing you and helping you to live life, and as they set the rules in their home, which is their responsibility, children, hear me well. Your responsibility is to obey your parents. Your responsibility is not to complain, not to ask 101 questions, not to pout and to get angry and ugly with the parents and say, why do I have to do this or why do I have to do that? No, no, that's not your responsibility. The parents are the head of the home. They're the ones responsible for the children as a young person. Your responsibility is to obey your parents in the Lord. That's what God, God wants you to obey your parents. A second responsibility children are given is this, honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment with promise. Why? That it may be well with you and that you may live long on the earth. Children are to honor their parents. Uh, Proverbs 31, the virtuous woman's children, they rise up and call her blessed. Um, we think throughout the Bible God wanted parents to, uh, children to honor their parents. Well, they wouldn't do that. Leviticus 19.3, Deuteronomy 27.16, children were not honoring their parents and God was not at all pleased with that. Cursed was those who, those who didn't honor their parents. And so when we think about honor, here's what we're talking about. Mom and dad, if they're good Christian parents, have done so much for you. They've, they've made sacrifices financially, physically, spiritually for you. They've gone to great lengths to provide you a good, safe environment to grow up in, to know God. They, 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 they do so much on your behalf. What should you do? Respect them. Give them the respect they deserve. Treat them in a way that shows honor. Don't be ugly to your parents. Don't talk back to them. 
Don't, don't say things that are not kind. Children are to honor their parents. And, and that's, in, that's not just, that's all your life, okay? Mark chapter 7. Uh, there were certain people who, uh, the, the commandment again, of course, was to honor your father and mother, which is the first commandment without promise. But the Jews had invented this idea that whatever money you may have been saving up to take care of mom and dad uh, in their later years, if you said the word Corbin, that somehow alleviated you of your responsibility because you're now going to give that to God, to the temple. And Jesus said, hypocrites. That's hypocritical. Mom and dad did so much to take care of you when you were young. You need to honor and respect your parents all their life. You know, they've been through maybe what you're going through. They've faced a lot of tough decisions. They've kind of been down the road of life a little already. And there's stuff, there's things we could learn from our parents. And so let's give them the honor and the respect they deserve. And then, my friend, I want you to think about this with me. What can a young person do in the home and in the family? Be a good example for your family. There are many young people in the Bible who did not let youth become an excuse for them. Listen to 1 Timothy 4 verse 12. Paul said to the young evangelist Timothy, be an example to the believers in word, in conduct, in love, in faith, in spirit, and in purity. Paul wanted this young man, Timothy, to be an example. And friend, as a young person, you can be such a powerful example in your family, in your church, in your school, in everything you're involved in. You can be an example to other people. Uh, let me give you some examples of young people in the Bible who were great examples. Think about in 1 Samuel 17. I want you to think about the young man, David. All David's brothers, King Saul's out there. Goliath is coming every day and he's taunting the people of God. And so David goes there and he's young. He really is too young probably to be doing this in most people's mind. But David says, he's not going to taunt my God. And he puts on that armor. It didn't fit. He takes that slingshot. He goes out there and he faces that giant with God's help. What a powerful example David was. Timothy and Titus, both young gospel preachers, they were a powerful example. Uh, think about Paul's nephew. In Acts 23, 16, he had heard about a plot to kill Paul. He took it to the leaders who were over Paul. He was brave enough to stand up. He took that plot to the leaders and saved Paul's life. What a great example he was. And then, of course, Jesus in the temple at the very young age. Jesus increased in wisdom, stature, favor with God, and favor with men. And He was in the temple teaching people about the Word of God. And they respected Jesus for that. Young people, others will respect you. If you have the type of example, you ought to be in this life. And then as a young person in the family and in the home, here's something very powerful you can do. Put God and His kingdom first, even if nobody else does. Even if you're the only one in the home maybe who does. Put God and put His kingdom first. As a young person, remember God is the purpose in life in everything that you do and say. You know, we think about what's life all about? For a young person, for an old person, for anybody, what's life all about? Let's hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God, keep His commandments, this is the whole duty of man. Life is all about putting God first, seeking first the kingdom of God. And so practically speaking, as a young person, put God first in these areas. When you're on the ball field, you're a child of God still. Let's act like it. If the team's not winning, let's act like a Christian. If things are going good, let's act like a Christian. If somebody does us wrong, remember, you're a Christian first. At school, put God first. Behave like a Christian at school. When there's a lot of peer pressure, maybe when people are talking like they ought not to talk or uh, doing things they ought not to do or involved in things that are not morally right, you put God first as a young person. Behave like a Christian. When you're dating, remember you're still a Christian. Remember your Creator in the days of your youth. Don't let your lust and passion 
cause you to do something that wouldn't be putting God first. And of course, as a young person, when you're alone, remember, God still sees and you need to put God first. Hebrews 4.13 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the good and the evil. All things are, there's nothing hidden from His sight, but all things are naked and open before the eyes of Him with whom we must give an account. And so as a Christian, I want to put God first in everything that I do. And then, of course, as a young person, we will encourage you to focus on heaven. What's the most important for a young person? Just the same as for any person. Young people, make sure your aim above all else is to go to heaven. Going to heaven must be the most important thing. There is a place where there'll be no more sorrow, sin, de death, crying, illness, all that's going to pass away. The righteous will go away in eternal life. Hebrews 4 verse 9 says, There remains therefore a rest for the people of God. Young people, make it your aim more than anything else to go to heaven. It's sad, but it's a reality. Young people die too. Are you making God your aim in everything in life? That's a powerful thing you can do to make the home what God wants it to be. And then young people, consider this with me. Make growing in Christ your main uh, spiritual goal that you're setting. Are you growing as a child of God? 2 Peter 3 verse 18 says, But grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior. As a newborn babe, we are to desire the pure milk of the Word that you may grow thereby. And do you remember Jesus' encouragement in the Beatitudes in Matthew 5 verse 6? Blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. Let's make a goal for young people. I want to study my Bible more as a young person. I want to learn to pray better. I want to be more involved in the youth group, more involved in the work of the church. I want to be an example to those who are around me. I want to grow spiritually. I want to study my Bible for myself and grow spiritually as a Christian. And then consider this. What can a godly young person do? Friend, we can't, we can't overestimate the power, how that being a good example is such an imperative thing for a child of God. I know we said be an example to the believers, and that's certainly true, but what about to the world around you? Be a good example to everyone as a young person. Again, Matthew 5, 16. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Have the mindset of Paul. I want to follow Christ. Imitate me as I also imitate Christ. And think about this, Acts 4 verse 13. Peter and John spoke boldly before the leaders of the day, the religious hypocrites of their day, and the Bible says this, And then, when they heard the boldness with which Peter and John spoke, they realized they had been with Jesus. We're not just talking about around your parents or at church. Young people, people are watching you of the world. People that you play ball with, people that you're around, people that you're involved in recreation with, you can be such a powerful example to those people. What else will help a young person today? Each of us need to be teachable. And young people, please don't think you've got it all figured out. Be teachable as a young person. Listen to Psalm, I want you to listen to Psalm 71 verse 17. David portrays the idea that young people ought to have, you know sometimes we think we've got it all figured out, we're 10 foot tall, we're bulletproof, we know all the answers, but really we need to have a teachable spirit. Oh God, you have taught me from my youth and to this day I declare your works. Deuteronomy 4, 9, Luke 11, 1, Lord teach us. Over and over again we find that God's people need to be teachable. We, we don't need to have a know-it-all attitude. I've got life all figured out. I know all the answers. Friend, that's a foolish, foolish attitude to have because we can all learn and grow and develop like what God wants us to. None of us know everything, right? Deuteronomy 29, verse 29, the Bible says, The secret things 
belong to the Lord our God. But the things He's revealed to us, to us, belong to us and our children. Nobody knows everything. And so we all want to have a teachable attitude. Focus on the things you need to learn, ultimately, to go to heaven. John 8, 32, you can, as a young person, you can know the truth. And the truth, it will set you free. You can walk in the light and live a good life each and every day. And then to young people, we say this. What, what can a young person do in the home to be a, a good person, to help the home, to be a good example in his community? Friend, let the Word of God live in your heart and in your life every day. I want you to hear what Solomon said or what the uh, wise writer of uh, the book of Psalms said in Psalm 119 to young people. This is such a powerful truth for young people today. Let the Word of God live in your heart and life. Listen to Psalm 119 verses 9 through 11. How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. Oh, let, not me, wonder, oh, let me not wonder from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. As a young person, one of the greatest things you can do is to begin to learn, study, uh, memorize the principles and the passages of God and put those in your heart. I know it's important because Matthew 4, Jesus was tempted by the devil in every way possible. Think with me about that for just a moment. Jesus goes out into the wilderness. He's there 40 days. Uh, he's in a trying situation. He's hungry. He's tired, no doubt. And Satan throws everything he can at Jesus. And, and relatively speaking, Jesus was a younger person at that time, 27, 30 years old, somewhere in that age range. And we know this. When Satan told Jesus, if you're the Son of God, command these stones to become bread, Jesus knew what to say. When Satan said, if you're the Son of God, cast yourself off the temple, for the Bible says he'll take care of his servant. When Satan said, all these things I'll, fall, I'll give you if you fall down and worship me, Jesus knew what to say. What did he say every time? It is written, it is written, it is written. Young people, what did Jesus say when he was tempted? The Bible says right here, not to do that. I'm not going to do that. Jesus knew the Word of God well enough as a young man to know how to ward off and defend against the temptation of Satan. How we need that encouragement today. Young people, study your Bible regularly. Study, as a young person, study to show yourself approved unto God, a workman who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the Word of Truth. Search the Scriptures daily. Make it, a, make it a part of your daily routine as a young person that you're going to study God's Word. Think about it. How much are you studying as a young person right now? How much are you studying the Bible? Are you studying it at all? You know, we've got it on our phones. We've got it on our tablets. We've got it on a hard copy. There's no excuse not to study the Bible. And we want to encourage people. It will benefit you so much to do what's right if you'll study the Word of God. Jeremiah 20 verse 9 is an example. Jeremiah had been beaten, he'd been slapped, he'd been put in prison. He said to himself, I'm just, he got discouraged, he said, I'm just going to give up and throw in the towel. And yet the Bible says in Jeremiah 20 verse 9, His word was in my heart like a burning fire, shut up in my bones, I was weary of holding it back, and I could not. Jeremiah couldn't let it stop because that fire had been lit and it wasn't going to go out. And friend, as a young person, let's take God's truth and not just put it here. Let's apply it in our life. Paul said this in Philippians 4 verse 9, Things which you heard and received and, and learned in me, these do, and the God of peace will be with you. It's one thing to have the knowledge. It's another thing to know where to apply that. We want to pray for wisdom, James 1 verse 5, so that we'll know how to apply God's Word to our life and really live as God wants us to live. And then, young people, I want to offer this final encouragement to you today. And it's, it's such a powerful lesson that we want to make today. Be so very careful as a young person uh, uh, about the type of people that you hang around and, and who you run with. Listen to Proverbs chapter 1. Solomon offers some advice uh, to his young son, and he says this, 
My son, if sinners entice you, do not consent. To young people today, we say, be so very careful the people you hang around with. Why is that? The Apostle Paul would say in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse number 33, evil companions corrupt good morals. Evil companions, they're going to not help us or build us up. They're going to help us to go down. And so we want to be careful that we don't run around with the wrong crowd. The wrong kind of crowd is only going to lead you down a wrong path and not in the right way. And so, as always, we want to encourage that the home will be what God wants it to be. Friend, if you're not a Christian, the greatest thing you can do to help the home is to become one. We want to ask you today, have you obeyed the gospel? Are you a child of God? Have you submitted to His teaching? You say, well, what do you mean obeyed the gospel? Paul said in Romans 6, 17, God, we thank that you obeyed from the heart that form of doctrine to which you were delivered. Have you obeyed the teaching of Christ? Do you believe Jesus is God's Son? John 8, verse 24. Would you be willing to turn from a life of sin in repentance and turn to God? Luke chapter 13, verse 3. Would you confess that name before me? And I believe Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Acts chapter 8, verse 36 and 37. Having done those things, would you be immersed in water for the forgiveness of sins? Jesus made it so simple. He that believes and is baptized will be saved. He that does not believe shall be condemned. What did Jesus say you've got to do to be saved? He that believes and is baptized will be saved. Peter said, repent and be baptized for the remission of your sins. If you've not done those things, friend, we encourage you today to become a Christian, obey the gospel, and then rise out of that water of baptism to walk in newness of life every day. And to young people who are living like they ought to live, keep living like a Christian, and may God help each of us to live in such a way that our homes truly are godly homes in an ungodly world. Join us next time as we'll study more together from the Word of God. You may have just joined our program and are wondering, what is the Gospel of Christ? The Gospel of Christ is an evangelistic work of the churches of Christ that reaches the whole world with the Gospel through TV, streaming, free media, and internet. Our motto is truly to take the whole Gospel to the whole world. We believe in having a book, chapter, and verse for everything we say and do. And unlike many religious groups today, we're concerned about lost souls, not your wallet. This is the Gospel of Christ. Visit thegospelofchrist.com for a host of Bible study materials, including audio and video of our lessons. Request your copy of today's lesson by completing a media request form online. On-demand downloads are also available at thegospelofchrist.com. We would love to hear from you. Email us at mail at thegospelofchrist.com or call. 844-6-GOSPEL. You may also write us at the address on your screen. Search your app store for The Gospel of Christ to access our mobile app on your this smartphone. Is the